definitely a good hand to keep here. Got removal, synergy, advantage, more synergy. So, yeah, can't really complain about that. We've already got the try on turn one, which is basically one of the best lines you can have on turn one, essentially. Do they go for the chip? They go for Confounding Conundrum. Now, that is going to be annoying versus our fetch line, but we can just fetch it in their turn. So that's fine. We can also use the Terra Sunder to exile chip or this, so I'm not too bothered. Midnight Clock. Well, that's a new target. Definitely get rid of that if possible. Unless they have a one mana counter spell, which is entirely possible. Or a swan song. I'm going to brainstorm. Okay, fair enough. They had the mana. They thought of using it. This is a good deck for brainstorm. Very good. Day of judgment. Let's go for the black market connections here. Having this resolve is wonderful. There's few ways for blue to deal with it. Mostly involves bouncing. So... Strixhaven Stadium. What deck is this? It's just lots of ramp and random synergy pieces. Okay. We're definitely going to go for the first two options here. Not too bothered about a creature just yet. Liliana. Let's go for the fetch land. Don't crack it yet because of the conundrum. Um, and then we'll go for the tampering here. This should really help ramp up the deck. Put Davriel underneath. Treasure. Yeah, we'll play the Sentinel as well, I think. Adds a little wrinkle to their game plan. Okay, let's see. That might have been a, a mistake, given that we have a Day of Judgment, but it might also make them use some resources on it. Chromatic Sphere. Is this an eggs deck? Let's just crack the Heath now before we forget to do it. And then we can maybe get... Um, yeah, one of the Savelle lands here. Savelle is just so crazily good. <clears throat> if you have 20 more cards, we can cast the card without paying its mana cost. That's really damn good. They're already cracking the egg. What is the wing con? Is it going to be Paradox Engine? Nyx Lotus. Intriguing. Mill 3. That's so good with Kethys. Casualties as well. Casualties might just win us the game here. I think we're going to go for Liliana and just kill the reality chip for now. Uh, uh, uh. Address me as Queen of the Dead, please. Let death embrace you. And now we've got the Mox Amber up. Um. Ah, oh, but it only adds black. That's a shame. Okay, fine. We'll hold off because mainly we want to keep the casualties of war mana up. So I've got four, five, six. Jingataxius. Yes, that is annoying. That is annoying indeed. Right, now we want bodies. Okay, okay. Now it's a bit complicated. How much mana do we do we actually have here? We've got five, six, seven, eight. So we can use Kaya. I think I think we're fine, yeah. We'll go Kethis. Um how many legends do we have in there? We've got a fair few. Yeah, let's use his ability. We'll get rid of one and two. So we can cast the Kaya and just exile the Jin. So that was a very lucky way out of this, because Jin would have been incredibly annoying to deal with. No job to yeah, and uh, killing a Jin without casting instant sorceries is just wonderful. And wow, the power of Kethis. I just felt like we had an infinite sized hand as such, because our graveyard was just our hand. And although it does take a lot of resources to get back Kai, as you saw, even if it takes 90% resources to get 10% back. That doesn't really make any sense, but if it takes nine cards to get one card back, 
but that one card is critical to you winning, then I think that's fine. And that's a good mentality to have when piloting Kethis. Hello, my name's Josh and welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at a Kethis hidden hand build suggested to me by one of my viewers who said this might be a good idea. So he makes legendary spells cost one less to cast, which is already pretty good. But also you can exile two legends from your graveyard until end of turn, each legend in your graveyard gains. You may play this card from your graveyard. So that's pretty cool. The way to build this, it's quite complex because you want to hit a few things. We're trying, to, we're, twine. we're trying to hit self mill. We're trying to hit a high legend count. And so there's not many that cross those Venn diagrams to be honest. So we have to kind of make do with what we have. So what can we put in the deck that hits both Run and Realm Breaker? This is really awesome. You mill three cards and you can put a permanent card from your cards you milled into your hand. That's really nice. You've got the Palantir of Orthanc, which mills you or lets you draw cards, depending on what the opponent chooses. Eliana, that's Majesty, lets you create a zombie and mill two. Vivian of the Hunt, which is something I haven't seen very often. Her plus one's amazing. Mill five, then put any number of creatures milled this way into your hand. So you can either choose to put them into your hand or leave them in the graveyard. And we have Ren 7 as well, which does a lot of milling and returning lands. So there's a lot of interplay between your graveyard, your legends, and just keeping your stuff around in a circle. It's kind of like a recycling deck. You bring everything back. And after you've put everything into your graveyard, you can return them all with Eerie Ultimatum, which is just a game winning card. And along the way, you can also use Breach of the Multiverse as well to put even more stuff in and nick a creature from your opponent's graveyard and one from yours. So let's see how well we can do today's video. I hope you can follow along, enjoy, and see the deck tick at the very end if you're interested to see my final thoughts. Until then, let's watch the exciting gameplay. All right, I've already, already mulliganed once, so you know what I like on this channel. I do not like mulliganing too many times. I know it's probably not good. To not mulligan too often but yeah keep this we've got the extinction event which i'm very happy about having because it does deal with the narset given that we can't target her and land on top is actually pretty good as well and the shape of sanctuary means that if they target our creatures we get to draw a card now we just have to keep getting lucky and keep drawing those lands so we can play all of our stuff luckily not only does the extinction event deal with the narset but then liliana also deals with it as well So here we have a perfect opportunity to slow them down, exiling the Guardian Idol with Terra Sunder, which I think is an absolute staple, by the way. If you've not crafted this for your black-green decks, then please do. Let's go for Kethis. We missed a land drop. Elemental Masterpiece is going to give them treasure, and they cycle one. Okay, fine. They've got five mana open. I'm just going to pass. Okay, let's see if we can swing in for some damage here. If they target Kethis, we get to draw a card. I really hope we can use Glimpse the Core to get a forest, because otherwise we're going to be behind on mana. Are they tempted to do something there? Okay, so if they don't use this mana here, they can cast... Nars set in the next turn, six mana will be available to them. And then, if all goes well, we can use the Extinction Event in our following turn to kill the Nars set. Or they might wait until they have some counter magic up or haste. Okay, fantastic. Is it going to be a concession here? I've seen it before. So, three, four, five, six go for evens. Nice. That should slow them down a bit, especially given that they. One of the mana they used was uh, a treasure. So they're actually kind of three mana behind. Because they only have five natural lands here. Gilded, Lotus, and a Confluence. Oh dear. Um, okay, let's go to combat. This could be a bad idea if they kill the Kethis. We can't go for the Lily. Also, if we go for Lily, they've got four mana up. I think we just have to try. Wow, we get to resolve a Lily. I wonder what's in the hand. They've got 
5, 6, 7, 8. They could have 9 mana next turn. Or if they play land, they have 10 mana omniscience. They could have any number of things. Ultimatum. Oh. That is rough. Although she's still alive, so. Can't really complain. Mind Stone. They've got so much mana. Oh, casualties. But sadly, we don't have the mana to play these things. Rise and shine. <clears throat> Maybe we just fragment reality here on the Lotus. See if that resolves. Do they have any creatures? I wonder. There's no creatures in their entire deck. Wow. Okay. Um, so they've got four, five, six, seven, eight. Farewell is going to get rid of creatures and enchantments. Well, that is a shame. That is a shame. Uh, so Broken Bond can get rid of Mind Stone. My kid, if you hear my kid, he has just, um, done a poo and he wants to show me but it is a bit distracting to be honest given that I am I am in the middle of recording but you know what if he comes in I'm just gonna have to deal with it magma opus so if he has Mizzix's mastery overloaded that is going to be very bad and I feel like that is on the cards here or on the books or on something can they get rid of Liliana if they can, it means that we can't use the minus ability. I wonder if they did think about that. Oh, they're going to give it haste. Okay. That's annoying. Land, 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 land. Okay, we got very lucky there. Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible. So, yeah, we got super lucky there. The fact that they hit four lands is pretty unprecedented, to be honest. We get to draw a card with the Lily Trigger. We hit a land. We hit Dodgen. Wow, we got really lucky again, just hitting so many good things. Question is, do we just. Do we just do that? Or do we go for the Lily? Yeah, we just do this. A land would be really nice right about now. You know, we have missed quite a lot, to be honest. Flip a neck. Does it give it flying? Doesn't give it flying. It's 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they've got 10 mana. They don't have enough to go for Narset and Angel Fire. I just need a land, for goodness sake, lad. Chandra. Mm, that's annoying. So they can deal five to both. Come on, man. Oh. Oh. Okay. They went for a weird. Still no land. Come on. Okay, land. Please don't have a counter spell. Artifact, land, planeswalker. Please resolve. How many counter spells will they have in a deck that cares about playing stuff off the top? Don't really know. I mean, this does take off a hell of a lot of mana if this resolves, because Chandra gives plus five. Oh, sorry, plus. Sorry, plus two mana. She can look at the top five. So one, two, three. Four. We got rid of four mana just now. Ten. How many more board wipes can we possibly get? It's a shame we never really got to use Liliana. Celestis and Lorien reveal to draw three. Oh, wow, they are just drawing like crazy. Two mana open. Let's go for Vivian Reed. Destroy the Celestis. 
How much ammo do we need for these? <laughs> Every turn they play something that makes me want to cry. Okay. So at this point, anything I'm really scared of is, is overloaded Mizix's mastery. Here she comes. Used all the mana for that. Let's see what we can get here with the Vivian. You can't stop nature. Cavern. I guess Cavern's fine. We can name Elf. Eerie Ultimatum would bring back everything. So I think we just do that for the Liliana, to be honest. Because the whole goal here is to make it very awkward for them to ever attack with Narset. Oh, yes, baby. We did it. We did it. We did it through a child trying to show me his poo. We did it through them casting Narset with haste, missing four lands. Pretty tough odds. Okay, going second, but we're going against Combo Lelia. And there's only one real way for them to win. So I think we should be fine, given that we have removal in hand, binding as well. Sorry that my kid is screaming from downstairs. You can hear him um, pretty clearly from upstairs. He sounds like a ravenous zombie, which is kind of common, I guess. And uh, let's not even let them attack. Uh, well, do we let them attack, actually? And then once... Hmm. I think we actually let them attack. So they cascade into the tr to the uh... no, it doesn't do that, does it? Mm, we'll pay three. Yeah, we'll just kill it. Yeah, well, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess once you kill it a few times, yeah. How does this deck really operate if you kill it a few times? It kind of sucks, right? Especially when we have first strike and death touch. If they have anything, I think Glissa completely annihilates the Lelia Le deck because even if they have a 69 69 trample, a first strike to Thutch will just crush it before she can even get in. So, yeah, use Glissa, instantly stop Lelia being able to win, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, a decent starting hand. I'm really into this hand against Elish Norn. So, double ETBs. And it's always good to have a fetch land into Triomes. That is the ultimate start you can have to be honest. And with so many fetch lands, it's just so easy to do now. You could argue maybe it's a bit too easy. Okay, and next turn, Holter Bay or Arena. I think maybe Arena. Not sure. We got the land, so it's definitely going to be Arena. Because that should propel us into our fifth land. Once we get that, we can just start establishing stuff. I'm not too concerned about Elish Norn. It's just, it's a good synergy piece, but I'm, I just don't feel like it's going to affect us too much here. And we also have so much removal, you know, it's just kind of whatever. They've got something. Maybe it's the priority handed over to the Mind Stone. Could be. But yeah, once you're ramping... And once you're drawing extra cards, it's very difficult to stop that train from, you know, hitting into their into their wall, taking them to Pain Town. Here comes Elish Norn without any protection. Let's do this in response for no reason. Well, yeah, there we go. They gain life, but who cares? Playing Elish Norn out as your first creature, I think, is generally a bad idea, given that. She doesn't do anything. Did they just leave her in exile? Oh no, that's bad. That is bad. Why did they do that? Did they did they do they know what they've done? Just gotta hunt one more monster. How hard could it be? Unless they've just kind of silently quitted the game. If they win now, I'm gonna be very surprised. They've literally just lost their commander forever. If it's a new player, then I I do feel bad. Loran's going to kill the arena. Unless they choose incorrectly. Yeah, that is the correct choice. Although, we do have the mana now. We'll breach the multiverse, to be honest. Let's go for bird. Breach. Let's see what we hear here. So we get one thing from each. Wow. Onyx. And... Welcoming Vampire. Why not? 
Let's get rid of Loran. Seems a bit overkill. And we can put a counter on here. Put it into his, into his owner's hand. Well, okay, this is risky. Because if this dies, this now goes back to their hand. Oh, well. We still get one one, I guess. Interesting. So they can get the glass casket out to exile our vampire, which means it goes back to their hand. Nice. Okay, cool. They realize that wording as well. So when you see really nice technical plays like that, but then you see they put the commander in the command center. I don't know. It's just a bit strange. Unless there's a card that I don't know that is going to absolutely finish me off. They're going to return a permanent. You can this is a super good card and super old as well. This comes from an original Zender car. Returning the glass casket. Th that, this is exceptional in this deck because you can re-trigger ETBs and stuff. They're not going to be happy with me though with what I have. They're really not. Oh my goodness. That, that's just crazy. So many walkers. Beautiful. Beautiful ladies here helping me out. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. And we get Kethis out. Goes for the counter. Okay. It's very rare that you'll put a casualties in the bin because you've got something better in Liliana, but it was just the perfect timing there. It just worked out. What would be annoying? Uh, Farewell doesn't hit Planeswalkers, but there's a lot of big white mana cards that destroy on and permanence, which I honestly don't see played enough, and I think it's criminal. You know, like destroy on and permanence. There's two or th there's three or four actually effects that do that. People like to diversify their threats so much, and when people don't run it, I just get away with murder. I can play lots of permanent types. Because I know that Farewell doesn't hit walkers, so I can just... I guess Super Friends got better because Farewell just doesn't hit them. Okay, let's see what we got then. So let's start by making a zombie. It's actually in here. We've got a lot of cards to choose. We'll take with the Onyx, which puts even more stuff into the graveyard. Maybe we want to get Ren and Seven out so we get all the lands back from our graveyard. Return all permanent cosmic gravity to your hand. Wow, that's crazy. And then you can zero to play all the lands. So many walkers here. We can foster much growth here. Three things in the bin. More surveil. Flowering, that's cool. That's very good considering we have zombies coming out here. Let's try and exile their blocker. Nice. And although if we play Liliana, then it does mean we lose the flowering, but we could also minus just to return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. The smell. I've been recruiting. I always forget you can do that. Let's just do that. Um, a six, hit, six death touch. Yeah, let's let's give Egon a go. Generally not a fantastic card because it exiles your graveyard each turn. But in this case, I think it's going to be fun to test out. We've got 20 cards in the graveyard. If we can't exile a few cards to keep him alive, then there's no hope really. And you know what? Maybe they do have a card that destroys on unknown permits. And maybe I'm just walking into a trap. Settle for one. That actually shuffles the flowering of the white tree away. I'm actually more upset about that than losing our commander. Yeah. A very unusual game there. And you can just see from the raw power of the play. If our planeswalkers aren't touched and we just play another one, another one. Once you've got two or three, that's kind of it. You know, it really is. So there you go. Okay, so I found this actually really fun, and it was a pretty good experience up until I hit a certain point where something weird happened, and it's almost like the alg algorithm said to me, hey, Josh, you're having too much fun. And then I started playing Rusko and Sithis and other competitive decks, and I, I don't really know what happened. It was a 
a very weird experience. It's almost like you hit a certain time point. Must have been about 7.30 p.m. UK time. And the opponents changed. Maybe it's because there's more American players at this time or uh, international players. I don't really know. But the whole vibe changed. So I'm kind of in two minds where to position the deck. It's really fun. It's really good. There's a lot of cool shenanigans you can do by looping things around in circles, milling stuff and getting stuff back. But yeah, I, it always comes with a warning where, you know, I will tell you the truth that you will face Ruscos and stuff, which I find a bit unusual. It's really not that strong compared to Rusko anyway, but it's just the way it is. You know, those players, they're, they're out there. There's so many of them. And would I still craft the deck knowing that? Uh, yes, but with that in mind, I would drastically lower the curve. I thought this was just going to be a, be a bit of fun, just to mill some random cards, get stuff out. But yeah, the curve to deal with the stronger decks, I would reduce it. Probably have a lot more two drops, but it's just exciting to have these, you know, seven drops, eerie ultimatum, breach, casualties. They're just so good. They're so fantastically fun. The walkers do definitely give it a really interesting edge. You could take all the walkers out if you really wanted to, but I think it'd be a bit crazy because they just give you so much value. And what would you really replace them with? Legendary creatures, I guess. Legendary enchantments, maybe? That would be cool, like an Abzan Enchantress build. Tell me what you think would work well with a Kethis the Hidden Hand build. Tell me in the comments below and also have a go with my deck list. It's in the description. You can support the channel for free by liking and subscribing. That's really nice. Supports the channel. Or you could throw money at me through Ko-fi or Patreon. That helps me even further as YouTube doesn't pay very well at all. Watch more of my videos to support me as well. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.